Basketball Bracket Week on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Kubota's BX Series, the number one selling subcompact tractor in the USA. All right, 12.4 seconds left in this game. Uh, the winner is in the ACC final against Florida State tomorrow. Duke up one, 74-73, 12 seconds there. Just a short time ago, San Diego State beat the top seed Nevada, so they are in the title game of the Mountain West. Utah State, Fresno State, who do you like in this one? Well, with VCU losing earlier today, I got a spot open in the CBS Sports Top 25 and one. Utah State, if you win, you get it, so now they got something to play for. I got to be right again. Really, Gary? <laughs> I'll go with Fresno State. Deshaun Taylor, the team that needs to get into the Mountain West Championship. We're going to have a bid stealer in the Mountain West. I broke West. it down for you earlier. It is Utah State. We'll take this one right now. If Utah State loses, all of a sudden it's a bid stealer in the Mountain West. It would be three bids. Enjoy the game. We're back at halftime. We just saw a stunning upset in Las Vegas in the first semifinal of the Mountain West Conference Tournament. San Diego State slams the door on number one Nevada. Who will the Aztecs face? Will it be Utah State or Fresno State? Those two set to square off in our second semifinal of the night. High flying action on CBS Sports Network. Nighttime in Las Vegas, you're watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. Getting set for our second semifinal of the night on CBS Sports Network as the three seed Fresno State takes on number two, Utah State. A look at the bracket in the Mountain West Tournament and a short time ago, San Diego State pulling the upset over Nevada without Jordan Caroline. The Aztecs are in tomorrow's championship game on CBS. And hi again, everyone, with Steve Lapis. I'm Andrew Catalan. We'll hear from Evan Washburn coming up. So San Diego State in the championship game, and now Fresno State playing for a spot in the title game. Bubble teams around the country not happy with what they're seeing here in Vegas. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, those bubble teams are not sleeping tonight or tomorrow night at all because if Fresno State goes and wins this, now the Mountain West is going to get three teams in the tournament when people are only counting on them to get two. This is not happy times for bubble people. So the bubble people are going to put their Sam Merrill jerseys on <laughs> yes. tonight. They need him to have a big game for the Aggies. And he has a great chance to have a big game because he is the reigning player of the year in the Mountain West Conference. A spectacular three-point shooter, 39% on the year. Last night, nine assists. Tells you what kind of passer he is out of the two-guard spot, but he can't play the point. But this kid also shoots seven free throws a game. He's got a really very game and tremendous player. And for Fresno State, Deshaun Taylor coming off a big performance in the quarterfinals. Well, he's a true point guard who leads the way. Last night, 10 assists. He also can score. He makes threes. He's also an all-defensive player in the Mountain West, so he's able to put tremendous pressure on the ball. This guy has been spectacular this season, and he needs to be tonight. And they also need to get Braxton Huggins going. You see what he did last night against Air Force, only one point. 0 of 11 from the floor. They need him if they're going to knock off Utah State. Semifinal number two between Fresno State and Utah State coming your way next on CBS Sports Network. Sabbath start playing today. Third meeting this season between Fresno State and Utah City. They split the first two. Both teams won on the road. Both games. One point games Huggins 33 in Logan on January the 9th Justin Hudson first season at Fresno State. He's done a great job. He could have been coach of the year if it wasn't for the guy on the other bench Craig Smith also in his first season as we take a look at today's starting lineups brought to you by Kubota Nate Grimes the biggest guy on the starting lineup for the Bulldogs at 6'8 225 and for Utah State Sam Merrill the Mountain West player of the year averaging 21 points per game for Craig Smith who was named Mountain West coach of the year previous four years 
as the head coach at South Dakota has done a tremendous job. 26 wins as we send it over to Evan Washburn. Well, after the track meet, Utah State played against New Mexico last night. It'd be reasonable to ask, how much do they have left in the tank? Well, they'll tell you plenty, and they've got the gas tank to prove it. This gas tank, which is signed by every member of the team, has been in the Aggies locker room for the last two weeks. Craig Smith taking a page of the Bill Parcells coaching book to sort of say, hey, you always have a little bit left in the tank. Guys I spoke with said they love it. They've adopted it. And for all of us that have worked a lot, we feel like we should probably have one of these for our crew. Guys, what are you thinking? There's the Aggie, too. He wanted to say what's up. <laughs> I love it, Evan. We usually use different things for our gas tank to get us going, but I love what the Aggies are doing there. Yeah, he's got a little gas in him here late night in Las Vegas. And Andrew, how about the two games these two teams played during the season? One point games, winning on each on the other guy's court. Fresno State handled Air Force last night, 76 to 50 in the quarterfinals. They made 16 threes, while Utah State had had their hands full with New Mexico. They were down by eight in the second half, came back to win 91 to 83. And we're gonna give the ball to Utah State. We had a violation off the tip. Our officiating crew, Mike Reed, Eric Curry, Bob Stafford. All right, so it's Aggies basketball to start. Let's see if Utah State's a little crisper on offense. See, they ran a great play there. And Merrill drains it right off the bat. See, the one thing you're going to see tonight that they couldn't do last night, because of the way New Mexico was pressuring them, they couldn't run any offense. That was a set play. Sam Merrill knocks it out. Merrill, a 39% three-point shooter, seventh best in the Mountain West. Now Huggins, can he get it going? So he was 0 for 11. Last night, he misses his first shot attempt tonight. Merrill penetrating. Off-balance shot is good. And a quick five for Sam Merrill. He's already into this game. Not that he wasn't last night. He had nine assists. I mean, he had scored. But he didn't have a typical game for Sam Merrill like the other last night. He didn't get a lot of open looks either, New Mexico. But that pressure defense forced 24 turnovers, a season high for Utah State. Yeah, it was a helter-skelter game, so you kind of had to play helter-skelter on offense. Noah Blackwell, and he connects to put the Bulldogs on the board. I mean, they're running all set plays right now because even though Fresno State puts pressure on you, it's a different kind of pressure. It's not double team pressure. Merrill missed the three and the rebound to the Bulldogs. This is Bittner. Locates Blackwell in the corner. His three won't go. And Merrill with the rebound. Up ahead is Taylor. Passes on the shot to Brock Miller for three. That's on a layup. Curious decision there by the senior Queen Taylor. Huggins the other way. Still does not look right. Miller. Oh, great pass fake. That was just a great fake with the ball. Miller, the redshirt freshman out of Sandy, Utah. And a whistle and a carry is called on Deshaun Taylor. You take a look at Brock Miller here, does a great job. Terrific. Throws the defender, laid it in the basket. Ryan Dutcher, the San Diego State head coach, just walked by, and I don't think we're going to get that smile off him for a long time. Oh, well, 24 yeah. hours anyway. Well, at least till then. It's the most fun thing to do to prepare for a championship game. Like when those guys go back to the hotel tonight or they wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, it's probably, that's what I would do. I would do it tonight, wake up at 5, but you're up at 5 o'clock and you're like ready to roll. It's like a great feeling. Championship game tomorrow on CBS, 6 o'clock Eastern time. That's a 
to miss. You don't miss losing, but you miss winning. Great pass. Cato couldn't finish. Taylor gathers it and scores. I'll get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to eat a bar. We'll go to the airport together. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm getting off. <laughs> I mean, that is some important. That is some deep position down low. And Grimes is going to have his hands full with the size of Kata in this game. Oh, Taylor, tough shot, and he hits it. He gets in the lane at will, and he has all those little floaters. Great field for the game. But right now, Utah State is really executing well. No double team. Here it comes on the dribble. They work it around to Miller, fakes the three. And now Merrill has it, and a foul. He's going to go on Quinn Taylor. That's his first. That has been a point of emphasis all year. You've seen more offensive fouls on dribble handoff screens than you've ever seen before. A far better start tonight for Greg Smith in Utah State than yesterday against New Mexico. After the game yesterday, Coach Smith told Evan Washburn we were a train wreck for a while, out of rhythm early with the 24 turnovers for the game, but they were able to find a way to get it done. Well, this is like a normal game right now. You know, the Fresno State plays good defense, but normal man-to-man, -man, so you can run plays. Those other guys were doubling you all over the court. You had to attack. And this team is showing the ball handling that we expected to see from them. They're one of the best passing teams in the country. Five on the shot clock. They feed Kata, guarded by Grimes. Kata over Grimes, air ball. And here comes Braxton Huggins. That's what Grimes has to do. He has to make Kata. And that's got to feel great for Huggins after an 0 for 11 performance last night. He gets on the board early. But we need to note, Andrew, he had 59 points in those two games against Utah State this year, 59. At 33 on the road in Logan, including eight three-pointers for Braxton Huggins. And I was saying about Grimes, he's got to make Kata shoot over. You can't let Kata seal you up. He's got to make Kata shoot jump shots over him. He can't get sealed up there. Grimes fouls Kata. That takes us to our first timeout of the night. Semifinals of the Mountain West Conference Tournament as you're watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. Basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Kubota's BX Series, the number one selling subcompact tractor in the USA. By AT&T, more for your thing, that's our thing. And by GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. The Utah State Pep Band. They like what they see so far. Their Aggies out to a three-point lead on Fresno State. Let's get our shot tracker going. We've got this sensor in every player's uniform and follow Sam Merrill around for a little bit, Coach. Well, he does a great job of setting a screen. And I always tell our guys, the more screens you set, the more shots you get. Be active as a screener and your guy will get lost. He does here. He goes all the way to the basket. He has all those little floaters. Just a really, really good offensive player. Five points, including a three-pointer already for Sam Merrill, the Mountain West Player of the Year. He had 23 last night against New Mexico, but 11 of the 23 came at the free-throw line. And when you look at the game, 45 free-throw attempts last night for Utah State against New Mexico. And Evan Washburn has more on Sam Merrill. Well, we've seen shot trackers actually shown us the mileage of some of these guys. I'd be curious at the end of this one for Sam Merrill because he actually lost 15 pounds in the offseason. He was a third team all Mountain West last year, a really capable scorer. But when I spoke to him earlier in the week, he said he knew he was going to get so much attention, all that work he does off ball, and also as a defender, he realized he had to drop the weight. And guys, the biggest thing, sweet tooth. A man likes to eat some cookies. That's been the hardest. <laughs> 
hardest part about dropping the weight, but it's made a difference. We all love cookies, Evan. Oh my God, I have a sweet tooth and a hat. <laughs> I got sweet teeth. About Evan, he's got gas cans. He's talking about <laughs> mileage. I feel like this is like a, a car commercial. <laughs> what a move! Are you kidding me? Wow! And the finish. I mean, there's a lot more to Sam Merrill than shooting threes. I can tell you that. That is a tremendous crossover. Early on, Merrill seven, Fresno State six. And he pokes it away with the steal for Merrill. And the foul is called as Merrill goes to the ground hard. And look who he poked it away from. One of the best point guards in the league. He's like, look at that crossover. And then the poking the ball away from Deshaun Taylor. Taylor was the one who committed the foul. And the last thing you want to do if you're Fresno State is foul this man, Mr. Merrill, 90% from the line, number one in the Mountain West. You know, we didn't really get a good look of why Utah State has had the kind of season they had yes, yesterday, but we're getting a look at what this team has been about the whole year right now. They've won eight straight games. They began conference play with a one and two record. And since then, they've won 15 of their last 16. You know, New Mexico just kind of took them out of what they like to do. But boy, if you let this team do what they want to do, they'll cut you apart. And they've been really good defensively all year long for not allowing a lot of dribble penalty. Great job denying the dribble there. Huggins with an air ball. Really good defense. Rito passes on the three, drives in, they work it around the perimeter. They whip the ball, there's another foul. And that's number two on Taylor. Look how they reverse the ball, Andrew. I mean, this team gets the ball side to side and moves it quickly. They're one of the top teams in the country in assists. They assist on 61% of their baskets. Tournament profile for Utah State. Yesterday, Jerry Palm had them as a nine seed. After their win over New Mexico, he moved them up to a number eight seed today. It'd be nice to get in that seven range, get away from those ones in the second game if you can. You'd have to win the tournament yes. in order to do that. Dwayne Brown misfires. Good hustle by Brito, though, to keep the possession alive. Brito had a great performance last night, 14 points off the bench. This team passes the ball. Straight away three, Brown. This is another offensive board. Kata blocked from behind. Gee, this kid's, he's going to be a great player, but he's got to get stronger. And Justin Hudson calls timeout. Team in the game, Utah State. But you can do that against Fresno State because they're not big at all. Miller, his three no good. Offensive rebound, Justin Bean. How good was Bean last night? First career double-double last night for Bean as Brito gets the roll. Justin Hudson and all the Fresno State fans were holding their breath. That could have gone on Taylor instead. Brito picks up the foul. Aggies by eight. March Madness begins with a big reveal. Be the first to know as CBS breaks the news and breaks down the brackets. The Selection Show, Sunday on CBS. To go first half, Utah State has a 19-11 lead on Fresno State and Early on, we've been very impressed with the Aggies passing, Coach. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. They get the ball to all sides of the floor. So when you use the entire court, think about it. It's a lot harder to guard 50 feet of width than 15 feet of width. And that's what Utah State is so good at. And because they put so many good shooters out there and passers, they're able to play the game like that. Look at that there. Zero to two passes, seven possessions. Five points right there. Three to five passes, eight points. That tells you something. Three team fouls on the Bulldogs, four against the Aggies. Taylor's playing with two fouls. And a 
Gahow again. He's unbelievable. He hit six threes the whole season. He hit four last night, and now he's got one early here tonight. Bean to a cutting Taylor out to Merrill. Extra pass, Brito. Again, great ball movement. These guys just feel each other. They have a great chemistry, is what you're seeing tonight. 17 assists per game, top 10 in the country for Utah State. Merrill did a great job staying in front of Deshaun Taylor that time. Taylor, wild shot. Brito grabs it and brings the ball up the floor. Beats an S side to B. And the foul! Off a beautiful dive from Brito. That is what you call threading the needle. And he sees it all the way. And Grimes just kind of fell asleep, but that was a big time dime. Grimes picks up his second foul. And now Bean at the line trying to cap off a three point play. Isn't it amazing? If you saw this Utah State team play 24 hours ago, you didn't know they could do what they're doing now. They are absolutely slicing these guys up in the half court. I love teams that can play half court basketball, especially at tournament time. Because a lot of these games come down to half court possessions, and they're pretty good at it. So here's my question. I know that Fresno State is built differently than New Mexico, but after they saw what the Lobos did with all their pressure, why not try to speed them up a little bit? You know, you can't do it if you don't do it. You're not going to put it in for one day and start doubling all over. They don't double. They put pressure on you, but it's more denial. They one guy on one. They don't trap a lot. Huggins takes a bump. That's a foul on the floor. And the 15 foul against the Aggies. You know, that helter-skelter style is kind of who you are and what you do all the time. And, uh, you know, New Mexico's pretty good at it. Late substitution, Justin Hudson is going to get Rojas in, the sophomore out of Brazil. Christian Gray, who tweaked his knee in the first half last night, did not play in the second half against Air Force, and his left knee is all taped up, so... He is not at 100% to the Bulldogs. Neither is Huggins right now. Boy, he is really having a rough tournament. One for six tonight after 0 for 11 last night. Good pass. He's a good passer through this kid. K to the beam. Whistle. And the foul's going to go on Utah State. Well, you watch here when the double team comes. Take a look here at Braxton Huggins. He has got to do a better job of getting in this area here and cutting his man off. Doesn't cut him off. And they're able to get a layup. Great pass, though, by Kata. Kata just picked up his first foul with nine and a half to go. Bittner three, good! Samuel Bittner connecting from the outside. Doesn't take a ton of them, but he shoots 44% from deep. Sam Merrill's their point guard right now. Kid able to grab it. Reverse oh. lay-in, how did he get that to go? He showed some great hands there, so that was a great catch. And what a nice finish. Blackwell for three. That was a deep three, and he's well short. Fresno State made 16 threes last night against Air Force. So far tonight, they're three out of nine. He can play through this kid because he's got a very good feel for the game. Ooh. Follow no good, but Kata gets it back. Extra pass, Brito wide open three. Sets his feet and trains it.
largest lead of the night for the Aggies. Taylor and Keita getting it done down low. Read a long pass, not a good one. Bittner knocked it out, though. It'll be Utah State basketball when we come back. Burrito and the Aggies having fun in the first half tonight. They lead it 31 17 on CBS Sports Network. Being in favor of Utah State. Well, be the first to know as CBS breaks the news and reveals the 68 teams. Have your brackets ready as the madness officially gets underway. With the NCAA selection show Sunday at 6 Eastern on CBS. And here are some of the teams that have already punched their ticket to the NCAA tournament. And how about Fairleigh Dickinson out of the Northeast Conference? And there is Pete Lapis, coach's son. He's an assistant for FDU cutting down the nets. <laughs> how about piece, that? Getting a piece of the net. Uh, honestly. I wasn't at the championship game, but I was at the other two. We had a blast. It was unbelievable. So it was just a great time. I'm so happy for him and for Greg Arenda, obviously, the head coach. Second time he's going to the dance in four years. So a little karma, maybe. So he taught him a lot, including how to cut down nets. <laughs> uh, congratulations to FDU and to Greg Arenda and Peter Lapis. Bean trying to split the D and foul is called out. It's a tie up actually. And the arrow will give the ball to the Bulldogs. Let's go over to Evan Washburn. Well, guys, in that last huddle for Justin Hudson, there was no X's and O's. He just was pleading with his guys. You have to be much more aggressive in this game. And offensively, while they're three point shooters, he wants them to drive and kick. Doesn't feel like there's enough penetration so far in this half. And, and he's right, Evan, because one thing about this Utah State team, they've been very good defensively all year at not allowing a dribble penetration. That, that's the problem. I think it's the defense of Utah State that's not allowing them to penetrate. Blackwell attacking. And Merrill with the rebound. Points in the paint so far. 16 to 4 in favor of Utah State. Great pass. Merrill oh. three. Money. That is so good, I can't tell you. That is so well schooled, Kata. He throws it opposite, which is what you have to do when you catch the ball in the low post. That was as good as it gets. An 8-0 run for the Aggies, and they have doubled up Fresno State here in the first half. Bulldogs need a couple Derek Carr touchdown passes to get back in this one. Blackwell deep three is short. Can't get anything in the lane. Tough it. Merrill straightaway three, not this time. Long rebound to Brito is going to put it right back up. Keita tips it to New Williams. Taylor with the two fouls. Hands off to Crimes. Nice find by Deshaun Taylor. They get a little dribble penetration there, and they're able to get something out of it. Taylor, a career high, 10 assists last night against Air Force. Merrill cross court. Brito really quick to beam. Head on a swivel with these Aggies passing. And Brito cannot finish inside. Williams corner three. Bulldogs three out of 11 from deep in the first half. And normally they make 11 a game. They're a very good three point shooting team. One of the better ones in the country. Tops in the Mountain West. Miller. Coach, you said it. This is not the Utah State team we saw last night. Not even close. No, and you know, between the way New Mexico plays, maybe a little nerves on top of that. Nice, nice, nice. And they got through it, and boy, they're tough. Well, 
Well, make sure to tune into the 2019 Reese's College All-Star Game presented by Walmart. It's April 5th, live at 4.30 Eastern right here on CBS Sports Network. We said going off the air last night that maybe that's what Utah State needed. They were down, they had to dig deep, they fought without their A game, and maybe it would relax them going forward. Certainly seems to be the case early on so far tonight. And, and, and I think they're in a more comfortable place the way Fresno State plays defense. It's a one and one for Fresno State. As we go over to Evan. Well, guys, I spoke with Craig Smith this morning about that very fact. And I brought up, look, the NCAA tournament is out there and getting through last night maybe makes you feel better. And he didn't want to go there. He feels more that this team isn't getting maybe enough credit for their ability to find a way to win games. I mean, you go back to San Diego State a couple weeks ago, Merrill and Kata didn't have great games, but this group, because of the chemistry coach you brought up, they're comfortable finding other ways to grab wins. There's something to be said for finding ways to win. Coach is exactly right. Good teams find a way to win, and that's what they did last night because how'd they win turning the ball over 24 times like impossible, but they did. Porter back on the floor with two fouls. He's got the ball. Miller time again. Brock Miller cans another three. And you know, you get up on these guys, they go by you with the dribble, you stay off them, they knock down threes, and they only make like seven and a half threes a game. When you watch them shoot, you say, that's really it? That's it? 75% of Miller's field goal attempts are from three. They can't get that time they got a good move to the basket. And Williams with the left hand. A little patience, a little ball reversal. Now you open up the floor a little bit. <laughs> Merrill bounces it to Bean, but a carry pulled on Sam Merrill. And that leads us to a timeout, 3.37 to go. It's been all Aggies so far as they try to move into the Mountain West Championship game tomorrow night against San Diego State. Senior Sports Network. Watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota, 3.37 to go. Utah State trying to move on to the championship game against San Diego State. As we take a look at the bracket, that game tomorrow, 6 Eastern time on CBS. And our announce crew is in the house. Kevin Harlan, Dan Bonner, director Mike Arnold there. All hard at work. Getting set for tomorrow's game. The game will be produced by Ken Mack, who's producing this game right now. Our director right now, Jim Cornell. We have about 100 people from CBS here at the Mountain West <laughs> Tournament each and every year. And it seems like Utah State is getting it done from every inch of the court. I mean, take a look at this. That's Talk about using every spot on the floor. That tells you what a well varied offense this is by the way Craig Smith said last night he wanted to put Evan in the game so unless he does that tomorrow in the championship game Evan will be on the sideline this is tomorrow he's done every game in the Mountain West Conference tournament they found something with a gal I'll tell you yeah I'm kidding freshman out of Omaha Toes three won't go, and Bittner with the rebound. A great box out on Kata by Bittner. This season, Fresno State plus two and a half in rebound margin, but so far tonight, they're being out rebounded 21 to 12. Oh, Kata! I tell you, Guido is throwing some dimes in this game, that being another one. Justin Hudson quickly gets Nate Grimes, his big man, off the bench. 
And that one rolls around for Huggins. Second field goal tonight for Huggins. He's two out of eight. Sam Merrill in the middle of the flat. That's how you break a press. Merrill all the way. And one. Great pass by Brito. K to run on the floor hard. I tell you, I love, I love the way they just broke the press. You got to get the ball in the middle of the floor, and that's exactly what they did. They get the ball in the middle of the floor to one of their best, not their best passer. That's who you want breaking the press in the middle. Merrill already with 14 points. Make it 15. You know, one thing about Merrill, I have to tell you, Andrew, like I watched that game yesterday. If you asked me at the end of the game how many points he had, I said I had 12. What do you have? 23. That's you know, a good play. And 11 from the free throw yeah. line. 23 points, and you have no idea at 23 points. A gal with an air ball. Well, they do a great job of breaking the press. They get the ball into the middle of the floor, which is what you have to do, and get it into the hands of Sam Merrill. There's some full court pressure by the Bulldogs. Taylor brings it up. Merrill, quick shot on the three. Not there, and Taylor the rebound. Final two minutes of the first half. Taylor. That won't go, and Kata the easy board. I mean, they're taking shots off no passes, one pass, and it's definitely not working. Kata has eight rebounds here in the first half. He had six rebounds the entire game last night. Taylor left alone. Can't make him pay. Blackwell is going to tip it out instead he goes down to the corner to track it down. Fresno State shooting just 35% here in the first half. And they protect the lane so well, Utah State. What a good defense that was by Brito. Miller to the crown. Miller fighting for it. And it's high up. The ball will go to the Aggies. Well, here's how you break a pass. You take a look here. They got, there's my man right there. Sam Merrill in the middle of the floor. Now you got a three on two break. Perfect. Instead, he just takes it all the way to the basket. Twenty-six wins for the Aggies this year, most since a school record thirty in the 2010-2011 season, and that was the last time they went to the NCAA tournament. Merrill didn't get to follow through on that shot with the offensive rebound. Taylor Brito launches and hits another seven threes in the first half for Utah State. They're up by twenty. Out of bounds, and it's Utah State ball. Look at the last shot of the half. Taylor is slow to get up. Remember last night he fell on his wrist. Coming up, AT&T at the half. Our crew back in New York. Brent Stover, Wally Zerbiak, Gary Parrish. Swin Cash and Jerry Palm get you caught up in all things college hoops. Duke beating North Carolina at the ACC tournament tonight. Kind of had a feel that was going to happen after losing twice, and now Zion Williamson back. They'll get a one seed. I wonder, I guess Virginia's still get a one seed even though they lost to Florida State. Five seconds left. Merrill hits the three. And an exclamation point on a dominant first half for Utah State. They put up 50 before halftime. Clinton coming off that screen, shot fake, step back, whack. 18 first half points for Sam Merrill. 
And Evan is with Craig Smith. So our coach Steve Lapis over there had a lot of nice things to say about the way you guys played offense in that first half. How would you evaluate the execution? Well, I thought we've really executed well. We're a lot sharper tonight certainly than last night. Um, but we're really passing the ball well, sharing the ball well, and that's Aggie basketball. And so we're doing great things down there, but I'm more impressed with how we're defending. We're really defending well. They're a really good offensive team, and to hold them to 27 uh, doesn't happen very often. 20 minutes from a championship game, how will that shape your message at halftime? Oh, we got to play Aggie basketball. It's 40 minutes. Don't quit. Just keep chopping wood, chopping wood, chopping wood. And, um, you know, good things will happen. Coach, thanks for the time. Thanks, Evan. Craig Smith, ton of energy. Why not? Utah State up 50 to 27. Coming up next, it's at t at the half. You're watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota right here on CBS Sports Network. Vegas, and it's all Utah State so far in this one. They lead Fresno State 50 to 27. As we welcome you back courtside with former Villanova coach Steve Lapis. Peter Lapis's dad. We showed that picture in the first half. I'm Andrew Catalan. We'll hear from Evan Washburn in a minute. The ball movement by Utah State in that first half, an absolute clinic. They had 13 assists on 19 made field goals. You can't pass the ball any better than that. They played eight guys in this game. Seven guys have at least one assist. So that tells you about how you need to be able to play if you're going to play it. And you take a look here with our tracker, you're going to be able to see the ball movement, the tremendous spacing they have. They have one guy in the low post, four guys outside the three-point line. They pass it, they move. They all can make shots, and when you get open shots like this, it becomes a lot easier to make them. There's no doubt about it, but the ball will see both sides of the floor, and I tell you, if you're Fresno State, you have to say to yourself, how are we going to guard these guys in the second half? The answer is you got to be really disciplined, and you got to have a little more energy than they had in the first half. Time now for the first half stats brought to you by Jersey Mike's Utah State all over Fresno State on the glass, out-rebounding them. 25 to 14 and let's hear what Evan Washburn has to say. Well Andrew based off of what Justin Hudson told me he probably could have just shown the tape of Utah State in that first half because he wants his guys to share the ball penetrate and kick they had just four assists on 11 field goals and the other thing he pleaded for from his team that there's no metric for is just compete here for the next 20 minutes didn't really feel like they did that as well in the first half. All right Evan the previous high points allowed in the first half this season by Fresno State was 40. They have allowed 50 here to Utah State. And I agree with Justin, with Justin Hudson. They got to compete a little bit harder here. Huggins three. Rhymes the offensive board. The putback is blocked, but a foul is called on Kato. And you can't believe it? No, he can't believe it. That's the second foul on the freshman out of Portugal. Sends Nate Grimes to the free throw line, a Las Vegas native, so a homecoming for the junior. Well, they have to take this approach of just two by two, play four minute spurts, try and win each four minutes by four or five points, and get this thing into a manageable number. Bounds. Keep in mind that on March 6th, Fresno State was down by eight with two minutes to go at San Diego State, and somehow they pulled off an incredible comeback. Now, eight is a lot different than where we are right here, but at the same time, this is a team that will fight to the end. You have to always be wary of the inbounder. Sam Merrill was taking the ball out of bounds, threw it, and just ran behind, got a handoff, and he was able to shoot it. Barrow with 20 now. Huggins, can they get him going? That's a great sign. And they need a lot more of that here in the second half. They got to get some stops down the other end. Order driving. And he finishes. He's looking for the You know, the only time these guys dribble 
is when you're supposed to dribble, which is to go to the basket. They don't waste bounces on the perimeter. They are whipping that ball around without dribbles. Grimes, jumper. So the Fresno State offense looks good out of the gate here in the second half, but as you pointed out, they got to get some stops. And they're bringing a little bit more pressure here. Merrill to the ground, Taylor knocked him down, no call. And ten to shoot. It's one of the few times the ball stayed on one side of the floor and they still made it three. Ninth three of the night, this one belongs to Abel Porter. Huggins splits the D and a foul on the floor. We talked a lot about Huggins as we go back to the three here by Porter. You know, Blackwell just you know, backed off him a little bit. Coach, at the beginning of the broadcast, we talked about Huggins getting going. He is three of ten tonight, but it's Deshaun Taylor who's one for eight in just two points. Pick, neither one of their big two doing much. No, and you know, as we talked about Huggins in, in the two games at 59 points, doesn't look like the same guy. Grimes is getting taped up on his right arm. He's ready to go. Sloppy play. Uh, Backcourt violation on the bad pass by Bittner. And turnover number five tonight by the Bulldogs. And they have multiple guys. Like now what, Greedo's the point guard. Merrill can play the point guard. Abel Porter plays the point guard. It's like they don't really have a point guard. They got a bunch of guys that can handle it. Kato across for two with the left. <laughs> but, this kid is going to be something else. And they travel by Huggins. I mean, Kato, sometimes he looks really raw, and sometimes he looks as polished as could be. This is the polished move. Left-handed jump hook off the glass. He has great footwork, too, by the way. Great feet and great hands. That's what big guys need. Coach, we're seeing everything that Utah State does well tonight. When you look ahead to the NCAA tournament, what's a weakness for the Aggies? I'm going to get, and, and you know, their, their rebounding numbers are good. I'm going to guess they're going to struggle on the glass a little bit, I think. They're not physically really big or strong. Obviously, Kate is big, but he's not that physical. If they get up against a physical team, I think it could be tough. And obviously, they're shooting it as, as they're moving the ball. There's no doubt that they're shooting it. Like, they still got to make shots. And, they're moving it, and they're making shots. Kata staying out of foul trouble, staying on the floor in an NCAA tournament game has got to be critical for the act. Yeah, if he gets in there with a big guy that can play in the low post and gets him in foul trouble, an older guy especially, then they could have a problem. But right now, there's a lot to like about what you're seeing from the Aggies. Burrito from the baseline won't go. Taylor lobs to Grimes. Tough wow. play, and he put it in with the left hand. Well, Grimes coming out of the locker room ready to play. He's got nine points. He's four of four from the floor. Kato couldn't get a handle on it. Gets it back in his foul. That one's going to go on Taylor, and it takes us to a timeout. Pretty play here by Grimes, but still Aggies in front as you watch Bracket Week presented by Kubota. They <laughs> in control of this one, Mountain West semifinals on CBS Sports Network as we 
Let's take a look around the country tonight. Zion Williamson, 31 points in Duke's win over Carolina. Four tournament number one seeds go down. And then the surprise here in the Mountain West, or a surprise for some, UNLV, after just three years, decided to fire head coach Marvin Menzies. I mean, I'm shocked, really. The guy gets the job. Remember, Chris Beard took the UNLV job, then didn't take it, so Marvin gets the job in May. So he's got no new players. He can't do any recruiting for that first year. So he's basically had his guys for two years in the program. A couple of guys, not even one recruiting class. I mean, I, what can I say? I don't know why my son is getting in this profession, to be honest with you. Uh, that's the way I, I that, yeah, you have to look at it like that, too. I don't know why. And they improved their win total every year under Menzies. It seemed like he was really building good character kids. The program was changing in, in that regard, and now he's gone. You know, I, I, I say to people that, you know, okay, you fire a coach every three years. Guess what? 20 years are going to go by. You're going to have six coaches, and you're going to be in the same spot you are today. Be patient with a guy who you know is five years. Let's say you give him ten years, give him five, two more. That, that's the nature of the beast today. And that's Gray. Now they're going to get it to go down low, and Bean secures the rebound. How good is this Bean? Yeah, Mr. Bean. 14 points, 15 rebounds yesterday. This one inside as Bean is fouled. Check in with Evan Washburn. Well, guys, Justin Bean kind of embodies what this whole Utah State team and program is about under Craig Smith. He was a walk-on that was getting really no time at all early in the season. Craig Smith said he just kept making plays in practice, so at about the midway point of the season, they just started playing him more, and obviously he's made an impact. He's now earned a scholarship, at least for this season, and, and that's, again, Coach, the point you made. The chemistry and the roles defined on this team is what I think makes him pretty strong. Well, I'll tell you right now, this guy's going to have a scholarship forever. <laughs> I know you're only allowed to give them one a year at a time, but I don't think my man Bean has to worry about his uh, ship. <laughs> a pretty neat story, too. His father, Gordon, played in the NCAA tournament in 1987 as a member of the Idaho State basketball team. So now you're going to have father's son, assuming Utah State gets in, in the NCAA tournament. I think that's pretty safe. By the way, I think that's my favorite quote of the week. My man Bean. That is one I didn't expect coming into the Mountain West Tournament Week. <laughs> Miller. Another throw. I mean, the way these guys are shooting the ball. Now, it's hard to imagine they only average seven and a half threes a game. Oh, Huggins going up high for two. Cater was up there going after that one. Miller could not get through that three to drop. Huggins going right at Brito, and there's the foul. Tomorrow afternoon, starting at 1 Eastern, CBS Sports Network brings you more semifinal action with the A-10 Conference Tournament. It's Bracket Week presented by Kubota on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. And another bubble nightmare right there in the A-10 as VCU, the number one seed, losing to URI today. Yeah, the nightmare has happened. Quick foul. A lot of bubble people are feeling at least half decent about the Mountain West right now. Not fully decent, but half. Cato goes out with three fouls. And if Fresno State has to come back and win this game, the Mountain West would pretty much be assured of three spots in the NCAA tournament, which would take one away from someone else around the country. But if Utah State wins it, you think it'll just be Utah State and Nevada. I'll tell you, Grimes has been tough. It's the guards that haven't really been able to do anything. Merrill dribbling through traffic. That one rolls off the rim. Fresno State's going in a hurry. Taylor trying to. 
get something Whoa. going. He is one of nine. 0 of 4 from deep and four turnovers. There's a first team All Mountain West selection, Deshaun Taylor, who on inside college basketball last night, Wally Zerbiak called Taylor his favorite player in the Mountain West. Wally had high praise for Taylor, deservingly so. He had a great game and he's had a phenomenal season, but it's not been there tonight for Taylor. He's a good player, no doubt about it. This is another. I think Wally needs to watch Sam Merrill tonight. <laughs> For the SI jinx, it's the Wally jinx. They got all these cuts off the post, pick and rolls. Burrito got there, but didn't get it to go. Merrill, great defense for the steal. Brito, straightaway three. He didn't like the layup, so he wanted to hit a 22 foot. That's his fourth three of the night. He had 14 points last night. He's got 14 again tonight. You see with our shot tracker technology, Deshaun Taylor following him. One of ten shooting the basketball. You know, they're a really good team, but I'll tell you what, Cato was the finishing. Ooh. And a foul is called. Grimes will shoot two. Cato was the finishing touch to this group because that's what they don't have is that big, long, shot blocking kid who can score in the low post. I'd like to know who else recruited this guy. I mean, Portugal to Logan, Utah is a long way. There's a lot of places in between there. <laughs> Where was everybody? Well, he was a late ad. He verbally committed in April. And then by the time they finished all the paperwork and the academic scores, he didn't get to Logan until the second day of school. But did anybody else know this kid existed? I mean, you know, people are recruiting all over the world now. You look at what Gonzaga's been doing forever. It's just... It's a heck of a story. Well, Utah State on their roster, they have four different continents represented. So they do a good job of going all over the world to bring in players. Thing too about this Utah State team. They entered the year in terms of experience as the 55th youngest team in the country. Only two seniors. Merrill for three. But if you were to do that by age, they would not be one of the youngest teams in the country. Seven different Aggies have done church missions. So it's a much older, mature group. And hey, that's what Dave Rose has been doing at BYU forever, even though they've been a little down this year. But uh, that's exactly what they've done. Rhyme still playing with a lot of heart and hustle. Had the steal, but lost it. Gives it right back to Utah State. Huggins bumping in the beam out of bounds. It's Utah State basketball. 68 to 42 in favor of the Aggies. Second half, Utah State. Trying to lock up a spot in the Mountain West Championship game tomorrow against San Diego State as we take a look at Pound for Pound. Brought to you by Rogue Fitness and Pound for Pound. This man, Kato, is having a big night, inching closer to a double-double. And you know, it's funny because sometimes he looks a little bit wattish, and then other times he looks really polished. Tremendous potential in this kid. So long, so athletic, shot blocker, Great timing. He's going to be a really a special one. He came into the week with 73 blocks. That was before the conference tournament began. And at that time, he had more blocks than 57 teams across the country. <laughs> Huggins accelerates for two. And you know, one of the things that we talked about, Andrew, yesterday was did that, would that New Mexico game take a lot out of them because of the way the pace was and they had to really extend. They've looked pretty crisp tonight. Look fresh to me. Hey. Hey. 
Porter had it taken away. And then commits the foul. And not a good one there for Porter. That's his fourth. No, that's a bad foul. I mean, you're up 24 points. Get back on defense. Huggins for three. I mean, Steven, it's so early as they'd asking this question, but at what point, if you're Craig Smith and on the verge of playing a third game in three days tomorrow, do you start to rotate some of your guys like Merrill out of the game? You can take about, I, I mean, you don't want to go full fledged right now. There's still 10 minutes to go, but you're, you're close. It's a very quick turnaround. It's a three local time tip off tomorrow on CBS. No doubt about it. Merrill cuts and scores. 22 for Sam Merrill. You know, you see guys that can play with the ball, you can see guys that play without the ball. This guy plays with the ball and without the ball. Merrill's one of those seven Aggies who did a church mission as Brito lays it in. Merrill went to Nicaragua after high school and then joined up with Utah State. Yeah, I think you probably can get Merrill out of the game, Andrew. Now, I mean, that was 28 now. And that's the guy you got to get out. Kata did not secure it. The foul is called on Fresno State. So take a look at Sam Merrill. Just watch how he moves without the ball. Now he sees his man is not jumping to the ball, so a basket cut. That's really bad defense by New Williams, I have to tell you. He didn't jump to the ball at all. But a good cut. How about that? Merrill comes out with 8.45 to go. And they're chanting MVP here at the Thomas and Mack Center. As coaches, we get on the same wavelength. Who would think, barring some crazy comeback, could be done for not? Yes, yes, coach. Absolutely. And it's not like these other guys can't play that are in there. Like him. Cato's fouled. He'll shoot two as Grimes picks up two quick fouls. He now has. Actually, they don't. They get it on New Williams. We talked about this in the first game. How Nevada beat San Diego State by 28 last weekend and losing tonight. How about Fresno State? They scored 121 points in the regular season finale last weekend against San Jose State. And tonight, with eight and a half to go, they've only got 44. They didn't have the proper amount of energy at the start of this game. And uh, it definitely showed. And then Utah State, the way they played, just really made it look worse. So Kata picks up the double-double, his 10th of the season. He's got 10 points and 11 boards. Bittner's three won't go, and the long rebound is tracked down by Williams, and it's stolen by Bean. Up ahead, Brito. Oh, boy. He slipped. That was the first bad thing Utah State did tonight. Oh, they're getting tangled up over there. Bittner. A senior out of Las Vegas, and the tie-up will give the ball to the Aggies. What happened here to Brito? Brito slipped. You can see it right there. Oh, Merrill back in.
What do you think? They're up 29. I mean, uh, I would. I don't think he should be in the game. You got to worry about tomorrow now. You're 29 point game with eight minutes to go. The way they pass the ball, they're gonna they're gonna start turning it over left and right. That's the only way that the CB gets close. Is he all right? Kato goes down in the lane. Slow to get up, but it appears to be okay. 7.43 to go, second half. You're watching college basketball on CBS Sports Network. Total. You are watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. Back in Las Vegas where Utah State has a 73 to 44 lead. Time now to take a look at tonight's difference makers brought to you by Geico and Diogo Brito with 16 points. He's got four three pointers for Utah State. And Sam Merrill, 22 points. Mountain West Player of the Year has made three threes on the evening. How about Brito yesterday in the first half? No points, five turnovers. He probably never played a game like that in his life. The second half is really good. Hey, watch my, hey, Braxton, watch my backside. Well, Evan was talking earlier about how many miles the players have covered with our shot tracker technology. Sam Merrill, a mile and six tenths. He does a lot of moving. And he gets a rebound here. Just peeking ahead to tomorrow's championship game. Assuming it is Utah State against San Diego State. They played twice during the regular season with each team winning at home. What happened to Kato last time? I got hit right in the face. Yeah. Rito with two more. Nice pass from Sam Merrill. Utah State with 20 assists tonight. They average 17 per game. 20 assists on 28 made field goals. The only guy without an assist in the game is Brown. Shot clock at five. Taylor struggled all night. And Taylor is now one for 11. Kata does a tough angle. Bean, though, gets the rebound. His putback back won't go. Bean out to Brito. Shot clock violation. Bean's a cult hero. You hear what he yelled? Bean, Bean, Bean. <laughs> They've been listening to you. Yeah. There's agent. <laughs> I mean, he's a guy who knows his role. He's bouncy. He gets rebounds. You mentioned bouncy at Aggie Madness, which was their first practice of the preseason. He won the dunk contest. So Bean beat Kata in a dunk contest, among others. I don't know if I would have predicted that, but uh, he definitely has some hops. So here's Taylor, senior, phenomenal career. First team all Mountain West. But his time winding down with the Bulldogs. We're probably gonna be right on the fringe of going to the NIT. 23 wins on the year. Their net coming into the week was 79. They're in the hunt. Yeah, they're in the hunt. You gotta be in the top 100 to have a shot at the NIT. They obviously qualify in that regard. 
They got a chance. Yeah, the thing that's going to hurt them is all the number one seeds that lost in their tournaments that are automatic bids in the NIT. Right, and there's unless a lot they're of going them. to the NCAA tournament. Shot clock at three. Brito throws it away. Here's Taylor with Merrill hustling back. Taylor scores. You know, I'm going to say Brito probably would have had a chance for sixth man of the year also. I know Jazz Johnson won it, but uh, he must have been right there. Yeah. Averaged better than nine points per game in Mountain West play. Man B. <laughs> He's like a cult hero. He's got seven points and six rebounds. Meanwhile, Taylor has moved into seventh all-time on the Fresno State scoring list with 1,482 points. He passed Maurice Talbot and Jervis Cole. Fresno is really starting to look like they uh, don't want to be here anymore. That's why I'm surprised Merrill is still in there. Yeah, he definitely should be out. He should have been out four minutes ago. Yeah. Burrito's moving closer to a career high. He had 23 earlier this year at San Jose State. He's got 20 tonight. Grimes has played hard all night. Yeah, he's, he's the one guy who came out in the second half especially and gave some energy. 14 points for Nate Grimes. I have to think that uh, Merrill's coming out now. Taylor hits a three. A dozen triples tonight for the Aggies. And a timeout with 3.28 to go. And they'll be back tomorrow for the Mountain West Championship game. All Utah State tonight. Thirty-two on Fresno State. Tomorrow morning at eleven Eastern, we shift things over to the women's game as Ohio battles Buffalo in the MAC championship game. See who will punch a ticket to the NCAA tournament right here on CBS Sports Network. Our producer tonight is Ken Mack, but it's spelled differently. Our director is Jim Cornell. I want to thank our entire crew here on CBS Sports Network for working two more games tonight and then the championship tomorrow on CBS. Yeah, this team here tomorrow for San Diego State you know, San Diego State, a very good defensive team, but these guys are going to spread them out, reverse the ball. It's going to be a real challenge for San Diego State to guard these guys. Sam Merrill is out of the game. His night is done. He had 22 points to go along with five rebounds and five assists. Why not? Why not? Abel Porter with the three. So this season, Utah State has hit at least 10 threes in a game 13 times. And they're 12 and 1 in those games. Up 35 here in Vegas. Ball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Jersey Mike Subs. Be a sub above. And by Rogue leading provider of American-made strength and conditioning equipment. Beautiful night in Las Vegas, Utah State. All over Fresno State, 85 to 50. This guy's got to conserve. He's got to be back tomorrow for more.
from the Aggies. He's got the point down. A little flair from the pep band of Utah State. Now the largest margin of victory in a Mountain West tournament game, 34 points. In 2014, San Diego State beat Utah State. And right now, what's the margin, Lap? You're good at math. 34 points at the moment. 33. All right. I don't know why Fresno State is pressing. Greg Smith has emptied his bench. Carry on night, and they take it away. Out of bounds, shot clock at four. What do you think about tomorrow night? Afternoon. I think that it's going to be a great game. You'll see it on CBS at 6 Eastern time. I think it's so interesting to take the two Utah State performances that we saw the last two days. You know, found a way to win against New Mexico, and then this was an absolute clinic. So where, which Utah State team are we going to see tomorrow? The one from tonight or the one from last night? Well, I think they're going to be allowed to run their stuff because that's what San Diego State plays defensively. You know, they're not going to, they try to protect the lane. They don't put a lot of pressure on you. They're good defensively. They're solid in the lane, but I think they'll be able to run their stuff and the way they execute. That's the kind of, this is the kind of offense that a team like San Diego State can really struggle against because they use the whole court. Let's go over to Evan. I have a question for Coach on it, though. Despite the fact that Utah State's most likely in the NCAA tournament, that championship experience that San Diego State has has to have some effect because this, this place will be probably 75% Aztec fans, and, and that game has a, has a different feel than any of these previous past two days. That's a good point, Evan. I mean, there's no doubt that they've been there before, and let's face it, it as you alluded to, this, it means a lot more to them than it's going to mean to Utah State because it's their whole season, whereas Utah State knows they're going to the tournament. So we'll have to see how these guys hold up in that situation. Yeah, I think you're going to see a lot more San Diego State fans take a short flight here to Vegas tomorrow before the game. Or four and a half hour drive, yeah, whatever it is. How fast do you drive? <laughs> I think this, that road's like 80. <laughs> These Utah State fans having a ball up in the stands. Oh, nice feed beam to Ben Fakira, but he's not able to convert. Look at this. I mean, they're just getting warmed up. <laughs> They're into their squad, that's for sure. And tough for Fresno State, not really knowing if they're going to get another game or not right now. If they don't, they say goodbye to a great senior class of Huggins, Bittner, Taylor. Three big, big Bulldogs in that program over the years. Shot clock turned off. Utah State will go to 27 and 6. And the Aggies will play for the Mountain West title tomorrow against San Diego State. Five Aggies in double figures led by Sam Merrill with 22 points. And now Utah State. One win away from the Mountain West Tournament title. Very impressive performance, really, from the first possession of the game for Utah State. They up, update the bracket. The four seed, San Diego State, against the number two seed, Utah State. That's tomorrow, 6 Eastern time on CBS. Now Evan will be reunited.
reunited with his new best friend Craig Smith. <laughs> Those two have spent a lot of time together this week and now it's the Evan and Craig show on CBS Sports Network. It is and, and coach as he should thanking these fans that were pretty great in this game and then we got his buddy the Aggie I here as well. I workout machine. You should see him in the, in the hotel workout room. Yeah, look at him. They let him he, in the hotel. He works out with that face mask on or whatever that thing is. Coach, the previous two times playing Fresno State, games decided by one point. This one, 35. Why was it different? Well, we were pretty on point, I thought, defensively. They're such a good offensive team. They space the floor so well. They have four guys out there that can shoot it at all times, and Grimes is a good player. So I thought we really executed our defensive game plan. And then tonight was just one of those nights offensively where it just felt like everything was kind of going in, but we were really sharp with our stuff. Our spacing was good, and we really passed it. I don't know how many assists we had, but I'm guessing it was around 20. So uh, now we got to come back and do it tomorrow against a really good San Diego State team. 23 assists, so uh, you'll enjoy watching that film. San Diego State in a championship game. Again, we've talked a lot on the outside about the NCAA tournament, but the opportunity tomorrow for you in this program is what? Well, I mean, all year long we've talked about being the conference champions, and we did that in the regular season, obviously sharing that with an excellent Nevada team. And now tonight we get to, or tomorrow we get to play for all the marbles against a well storied franchise, so to speak. They have the most uh, conference championships in Mountain West history in San Diego State. They're the defending tournament champions. So these guys have been here, done that. And, uh, you know, we want to come out and play the way we played tonight. Uh, it means so much to our crowd. We have a rich tradition in our men's basketball program. And from day one, we wanted to earn that and get that back, starting with our home crowd with the Spectrum Magic. And obviously, you saw that, you know, against Nevada two weeks ago. So um, our guys are hungry, and I know they'll be chomping at the bit for tomorrow at 3 p.m. Coach, whether it's tomorrow night, tomorrow day, we know you'll be here and bringing the energy. Thanks for the time. All right. Thanks, Evan. Appreciate it. Go Aggies. He might bring Evan home with him. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we say good night. <laughs> for Steve Lapis, who just said that, Evan Washburn and our entire crew, I'm Andrew Catalan. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. We send it now to our New York studio for Inside College Basketball. Bracket Week presented by Kubota.